All righty. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace, Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us, uh, given to us by the Most High God. Uh, all honor goes to the Father, through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is a, uh, obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, and to the saints downstairs still eating. Um, no, uh, no, no, uh, what did I say? Peace to the saints that's in the room, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live so we are just coming off of the day of trumpets you know what i'm saying we are reaching the end of the day of trumpets right now going into the the weekly sabbath, <clears throat> the weekly sabbath so what we're going to do instead of uh going over you know what i'm saying we would be going into hezekiah right now um instead of going over that let's talk a little bit about the day of trumpets so that we understand the day that we just passed and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the days that's coming up as well. So let's open up real quick. Uh, Leviticus chapter. Let me put you. I think it's a way to mute because I'm about to yell, boy. Are you? Can you mute the? Let me see. All right. We back. We back. Brother T, you still there? Yeah. All right, just making sure. Um, so let's go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23. Y'all can't hear my background, right? It's loud down there. Uh, I can't hear. All right, good. There's a good mic here. Yeah, I think everybody thanks Sister Pamela for the mic. Yeah, man. Good looking out, Sister Pamela. I appreciate it. There's a good mic here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the Right, so this is this is the most high God. He spake unto Moses, and he said, Speak unto the children of Israel. In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing trumpets, a holy convocation. Right? So he said, In the seventh month, in the what? In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. All right, so let's take a look at our calendar really, really quick here. We're gonna go over uh we're gonna go over this calendar a little bit more um when we get on our fellowship call. I appreciate you, Mel. Thank you so much. Um, so let's take a look here. So we got the first month, Abib, second month, Ziff, Savan, the fourth month, the fifth month, Elul, which is the sixth month, and then we get to Ethanim, which is the seventh month, and then we have uh you know that 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 uh first day of the month which represents the day of trumpets so we're gonna go over here in the ethan M and take up the big calendar here so we can just get a, a good look at what we're dealing with so this is the day of trumpets so after that we have the next day that's gonna come up is the day of atonement right that's gonna start saturday evening and then it'll end on sunday evening um that's gonna be sunday the 10th um, and then after that, the first day of in gathering, which is going to be Friday the 15th. Of course, it starts the 14th, the evening of the 14th. Um, and it's going to be Friday the 15th. That's going to be the in gathering. This is a day of no servile work. And then we go into the in gathering, uh, eighth day, which is going to be the following Friday, a day of no servile work. Um, but then this is all the days of it. So every day. So we'll talk a little bit more about that one. Um, but these are all the days. These are the, the final days of the year for us of the ones that are in our law. The only other day that we have coming up would be uh, Purim, and that'll 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 hit us sometime in uh, sometime next year, next you know American year. Um, so we had a day of trumpets. Let's keep reading. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying. 
Also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And you shall do no, no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement. To make an right, atonement, and what are you going to do on that day of atonement? To make an atonement, uh, you shall afflict your soul. He said you shall afflict your souls, right? When it says afflict your souls, it's talking about, it's talking about uh, fasting, right? So it's saying you don't eat, you don't drink, all right? So we're going to go throughout the day of atonement and we're going we gonna to do a, a full, you know what I'm saying, 24 hours and not, at least not eating. Um, and then uh, if you up to it, do a full 24 hours of not eating and not drinking. That would be from the evening of uh, Saturday the 9th to uh the evening of sunday the 10th all right um so that that's what we'll talk we'll talk a little bit more about that one as we go it's blurry you said i ain't clear let me know if it's still blurry we'll try to figure that out um but we looking at the trumpets right so the trumpets what does that represent for us right if we if we if we look at our um our law we know that our priests blew the trumpets and they blew the trumpets for what reasons? Who remembers what reasons? Um, you blow the trumpet for certain parts of the camp to move. You blow the trumpet for war. You blow the trumpet to come back. You know, it was basically uh, organizing, move, uh, move the people around, get the people going. Where is it at? Is it uh, Numbers 10? Mm, or is it 13 i don't remember where but it does it just talks about how each each trumpet controls a certain part of the camp yeah it might be 13 try numbers 13 for me try 13 chapter one let's see let's see if it if it look right We about to go to Numbers chapter 13. We about to see if this is what we're looking for. And the Lord spake unto Moses said, Send thou men and search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. No, that can't be it. Uh, try 10. This is Numbers chapter 10. Give me verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. There we go. This is uh, Numbers chapter 10. Give me verse 1. Watch this. Make thee two trumpets of silver of a whole piece. Thou shalt make them, thou that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. Right. So he gave it to the priest for a specific reason, for the calling of the assembly. Right. The calling of, of the congregation. And what else? And use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. Right. And for the journeying of the camps, in other words, to keep the camps organized when we when we on our journeys. Right. So if it's like, oh, we got to make a left up here. Y'all, there's a lot of. Us. You know what I'm saying? We ain't no small group. We black, but a whole bunch of us. So he said, got to make a left. Right. We have the cloud over us, though. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to you got to organize people Woo! like, come on, y'all time to eat. Woo! Feast about to start. Yeah, yeah. Womp, 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 womp. That's war time. Right? He gonna tell us, watch this. Let's keep going. And when they shall blow with Look, them. a lot of these boys got the shofar. Right? The ram's horn. That's a valid horn. Right? But notice the one that he gave the priest is a little different. Go back to the beginning. Cause we'll mess around and we'll miss this stuff. I remember I used to, I bought a shofar. Right? Back when I was first getting into the feet day, I bought a little, you know what I'm saying, ram's horn. You know what I'm saying? I was looking like I was blowing that thing. I learned how to blow it and everything. That thing was horrible, though, because I wasn't good at it. But I learned how to blow that thing. And then all of a sudden, we start reading our law. And we're like, whoa, he gave that to the priest. So then I was like, oh, I, I didn't sin by blowing the thing. I wasn't supposed to be blowing the thing for that reason. Right? Then I kept reading years later, and I look at it. It's like, oh, that ain't what he gave to the priest. He didn't give the rams on. That's that because we don't pay attention a lot of times. We trying, though, and that's what the most high God do. Just if you obey him based off of what you understand, the most I got to bring you to the truth. I didn't understand what I was doing. I just thought, look, books say blow a horn, they are trumpets. I want to celebrate. In ignorance, blowing it, right? Then I read a little bit more. Oh, we ain't supposed to blow the horn. Supposed to be the priest. I ain't the priest. I didn't see him. Let me put that down. In ignorance. Both of them, I'm incorrect, 
right? I'm incorrect with both approaches, right? But then the most high God finally revealed everything to me like, yeah, take your time, young man, just take your time. I don't know why you got to, every time you see something, you ain't got to jump out there and try to do something. Just obey what the words say, right? You look at it, take your time. Oh, you know what? This is the type of trumpet he gave to the priest. Watch what he gave to the priest. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, and mm -hmm. the whole piece thou shalt make them, but thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. The trumpets that the priest used was of all silver. So not only is these boys is out here blowing the trumpet for the purpose of calling the assembly together, right? Not only are they in error, it's, it, and I'm, I say this lightly, we could, a, a man or a woman could blow the trumpet in the spirit of what the priest did, you, I'm not telling you you're going to hell for that, right? But don't think you keeping the law. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't, don't have it in your head. This is what the law said do, right? Because not only is you in error, because you got that ram's horn, right? That's not what he gave the priest. He gave him, uh, he told him to make it out of silver, out of one whole piece. In other words, don't you go trying to screw a couple pieces of silver together. Them ones that they sell in the store, mm -mm. you got silver attached and screwed together. They ain't all silver. Right. He said it got to be made of one. So you got to get one piece of silver and however you figure it out, it, everything got to come from that one piece of silver. Right. So the only way for me, if I'm going to buy one, according to what the priest do, it got to be one solid piece. Can't be nothing screwed on because I don't trust it after that. You probably got two pieces of silver and did it. You know what I'm saying? How I know you, you bought it. How I know you made that from one solid piece of silver. I don't know. It's possible you could have melted it down, broke it up into pieces, screwed it all back together. Maybe. Are the screws made of silver? All right, then no, that's against our law. You know what I'm saying? That thing got to be made of one piece of silver, right? That's what he gave to the priest. So these boys, none of these boys are even approaching what the priest did. But then even if they did, if you ain't a priest, you shouldn't be touching it, right? According to our law, at least. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I understand people doing it in the spirit. It's just like tithing. Technically, it ain't no tithe, right? But you know what I'm saying? You can still get 10%, set aside 10% for the poor. You know what I'm saying? Set aside 10% for the man of God or the, per the people of God. And you can support them with that, right? But that ain't the real tie. We should all just know that. We just doing something in the spirit, in the order of the law, right? Let's keep going. What else we got? And when they shall blow with them, and they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Look, when the horn blow, what is the assembly supposed to do? Assemble together, assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Everybody's supposed to show up. When the horn blow, everybody's supposed to show up in front of God. That's what's supposed to happen. Keep that in mind. Keep going. Let's see. And if they blow but one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. Right? So listen. If it's one trumpet, right? If it's only, look, if the horn blow, don't doubt, show up in front of the tabernacle, right? It's time to meet God, right? If the horn blow, right? But if only one horn blow, they did give you a two, womp, and it's only one horn, that's because it's supposed to be the, when they say the princes, they're talking about the rulers. The people in charge is supposed to show up, right? Let's see. When ye blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. Right? If it's an alarm, you know what I'm saying? You blow that on alarm, or everybody on the east, suit up. Go, he said, go forward. What are they going forward to? Let's see. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south, south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. Uh-huh. So then you blow alarm. First alarm, east got to go. Second alarm, south got to go. What else? But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. Mm-hmm. So he's saying there's a difference. You blow it. Look, if I blow it, somebody got to come, right? When I blow it, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody got to come. If it's just one horn that blow, oh, that's the rule is you got to come, right? If I sound an alarm, we're going. Right? Keep going. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. So who blowing the trumpets? Sons of Aaron. 
And how long is it going to be just until 2022? Forever. That book say forever it's going to be an ordinance. That's who it's given to. So don't we just shouldn't have it in our mind that we we are upholding what the law is saying. Are we fulfilling what the law is saying? If we got our little ram's horn and we blowing it, that's not what the law say. You first, you got to be a pre, you got to be a son of Aaron. Right, you can't just be a Levite. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you found your genie. Maybe you did twenty three and me. You know what I'm saying? And maybe they were gracious enough to say, you know what, son, you a Levite. It connects you all the way back. Like, yeah, man, my father's name was, you know what I'm saying, Arya. Like that was his name, huh? Yeah, Arya, Arya the Great. Back in uh, you know what I'm saying, West Africa. You know what I'm saying? The uh, what they call what, what they call that part of uh, West Africa? The gold. Uh, what's it called? The Gold Coast, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He's back in the Gold Coast, you know what I'm saying? Aria the Great is what they called him, you know what I'm saying? And it say right here, I'm reading the literature on him, it say right here, he was a Levite. You know what I'm saying? He tra Let's say it tra he traced himself back to the son of Marari. That's legit, you know what I'm saying? Legit, let's say, let's say you a Levite. Guess what? Don't touch that darn horn. You know what I'm saying? Don't touch the horn. Cause you can't just be a you can't just be a Levi. You gotta be what? You gotta be a son of Aaron specifically. He a Levi too, right? You a Levite if you a son of Aaron. That's a fact. However, it's different. You know what I'm saying? It's a little different. You know what I'm saying? It's a little different. That's why we gotta understand our law. We gotta love it. We gotta dig into it. Don't let these people put it in your mind that, like, you know what I'm saying? Well, this, this, is, this is how they try to force us to think. This is how the world, this is how Satan try to force us to think. He try to get us in this mindset where we trap ourselves. You have to keep the whole law to be saved, right? And then we end up in that mindset and eventually along the path, it don't make sense. It don't make sense because that's not what the scripture says. The scripture don't say nothing about keep the whole law to enter into the kingdom. We after the kingdom right now, right? So, because of that, it don't make sense in our mind. And then you start drifting off and going into other stuff. You see these celebrities, right? They pop out one year, don't they? I'm an Israelite. You see Kendrick, don't call me black no more. I'm an Israelite. Ain't that what he say? Next album, what are you talking about? Praying to trees and all types of crazy stuff. Because it don't make sense. If you ain't taught the proper word, it don't make sense. Now you go for everything because now you're just negotiating in your mind. Well, I know I ain't black and i kind of believe i'm an israelite but this law don't necessarily make sense the way it's been taught to me so let me pray to a tree what's the exact same thing we just got kicked out of the land doing it's the children of israel it's the same we the people we were going out what do you accuse us of going out to the groves picking the highest darn grove or the highest mountain and then we worship amongst the, uh, the grove or the gardens Hey, somebody at the door. Right? Keep going. And the sons of Aaron, the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. Yeah. Go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, and you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before you who are your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. Right. So you remember who remembers? We ain't got to get it. But who remembers when we used the trumpets in war specifically? It was a big deal. Jericho. You remember, we were going over into the land. Joshua was leading us. You know what I'm saying? Jericho had them big old walls and had giants back there. Right. Most High God told us, don't worry about it. Walk around seven times blowing the trumpet. Who had to blow the trumpets? Please. The sons of Aaron. If we go back and read it, it was the sons of Aaron. They were blowing it. They walked around, blew the trumpets. After that, seven days, they blew it. They did a long blow. Whoa! Walls came right on down, and we ate them boys for lunch. That was it. Most High God gave it to us in our hand. Then people were scared for their life. Because this is what the Most High God was talking about, right? Keep going. Watch this. Also on the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over your sacrifices of your peace offerings 
that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am mm-hmm. Lord, your God. Mm-hmm. And it came to right. pass on the twenty. So these are the we these are the uses of our trumpet. Our trumpet was used for bringing the people together. The trumpet was used for sending the people out to war. And there's something the trumpet was used for blowing of our sacrifices. These things are important for us to understand. What's going on, boy? You all right? All right. These things are important for us to understand. Right. The usage of the trumpet. Because now when we look at prophecy. It's going to make sense. A lot of this stuff is going to make sense when you start to look at the prophecy. You start to look at, you know what I'm saying? When Revelation talk telling you about seven trumpets, that means nothing to you. You don't know our law. If you don't know our law, that just look like, oh, one day, maybe when the world about to end, it's going to be allowed. These Christians, you know what they come up with? Ah, well, when John, look, when, when John the Revelator, that's what they call it. When John the Revelator was writing in Revelation, they got a whole documentary. When John the Revelator was writing in Revelations, he thought he heard a horn. He thought those were trumpets. But maybe they weren't trumpets. Maybe they were large. You know, they come up with large helicopters. And to him, in his, in his primitive form, it sounded like a trumpet. Shut your darn mouth. All these people, they just make up stuff. They be, I, was watching, I was watching one documentary. And they, you know, I always, I always was like, oh, revelations. You know, I said, ooh. You know, you know the, you know, the hyenas on Lion King, Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt about revelations. You know what I'm saying? So I used to always watch these documentaries about like how revelations gonna play out. What is it? And then one of these guys was saying, the uh, the uh, I think it's the locusts or grasshoppers, whatever it's saying, revelations. You know what I'm saying? That they gonna go up and they're gonna have face like men and they gave all these, you know what I'm saying? They're going to move like horses and they all going to be in, in sync. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's an army. You know what I'm saying? That's an army. And he wasn't familiar with the technology. So when he saw it to him, that's what the best way he could describe it. I was like, y'all better shut y'all darn mouth. Because, you know, listen, you try to predict that stuff and you, it's fine. It's fine to come up with theories. You know what I'm saying? You come up with a little theory. But you get too attached to them darn theory. And the most I got going to put in front of you a grasshopper that looked like a darn man in the face with darn horse feet. And it's going to be actually that. And your butt ain't going to know what to do. You're going to be pooping your darn pants because you're not even going to remember that that was in the Bible. Right. It's made this way so that when we see this stuff, we be like, oh, that's it. Everything's supposed to, for us. It's supposed to be like, oh, that's it. It ain't so we can predict it. it ain't so be like, look, next week, y'all, the grasshopper with man face is about to come out. Who else was right? who else was talking about that? I remember it said Joel. In Revelations. Joel. That's Joel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joel and Revelation talk about it, right? Right. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? We gonna look at we it ain't supposed to be like, look, y'all in two weeks, the prophet gonna do that. It's gonna be most high God gonna send Elijah. He might do it, or one of the other prophets gonna do it. It's gonna be prophets here that'll tell us, yo, it's coming. Just like we learned about what we what what did uh what did Isaiah tell us? That boy said, look. They got about 60 days. Didn't he tell you that? Listen, these boy got about 60 days. Kid you not. Within 60 days, these boy done. Somebody going to come and tell us. Right? They'll be like, yo, this is it. This ain't an alarm. Time to go. Wrap it up. Let's go. Come out of her. All these people now, they you, you, they sharing scripture. They Come out of her. Come out of Babylon. Talking about America with their silly butts. Talking about America. Come out of Babylon. Let's Let's buy tickets and go to Africa. Just silly, but what do you think they're doing in Africa? They got your black butt in Africa, too. You the bottom in Africa. Look, both of y'all just as black, because y'all think it's a skin color thing. Both of y'all just as black as dirt, right? Both of y'all, you standing right next to them, calling them brother. Like, oh, my African brother. You know what I'm saying? Call them darn brother. Guess what? Your butt get over there. First thing they're going to do is drain you of all your American money. They gonna light your butt up. You gonna come over there and be like, "Oh yeah, how much it costs? You from America? I got three hundred. Then you gonna see a, then you gonna see an African come back in there. He gonna be wearing a little thing on top of his head. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? Do a little thing. You know what I'm saying? A little booty scratcher. You know what I'm saying? He gonna come in there and he gonna be like, "You want only?" And he gonna tell him, "Don't it?" And he gonna give it to him two dollars. He just charged you three hundred American dollars. He's going to give him the equivalent $2 in whatever the African dollar is. 
African ain't even got African got a whole bunch of dollars because they colonized by a whole, whole bunch of different people. But whatever dollar they use in that colony, you know what I'm saying? That's the one he gonna give it to them. The equivalent of two U.S. dollars, he gonna charge you three hundred for it. You gonna look at them like crazy because you know you being overcharged, but you don't know what you're doing. That's what's happening over there right now. When people go over there, that's what's happening. They get gouged, and then after they get gouged, they have to decide to come back, or if they can't come back, they become the bottom over there, just like we are here. We is looking at we is looking at the uh I can't say their name because you know I don't speak Arabic like that, right? But we we you know what I'm saying we is looking at the uh we is looking at the uh the uh what I believe to be Hebrews in Yemen. That's right outside of Africa. Them Arabs is lighting they butt up. Ethiopia, same thing. You ain't gonna never see them on TV. But it's a group of black people that look just like us, and they in Ethiopia. You'll never see them on TV because they sitting there. They they poor, impoverished. They the bottom. That's Africa for you. Egypt, same thing. You go look. You gonna see all the Arab Egyptians, all the white Egyptians. You gonna see all they all over there. But guess what? As soon as the TV cut off, you look around that darn corner. It's some of them that look just like us, and they the bottom. No matter where you go, bottom. In the European nations, bottom. In Canada, I can't prove it with Canada, but I believe if you go out there and you look hard enough, you're going to see some of us bottom, Brazil, bottom, everywhere, bottom, you're going to find us. Look, Babylon ain't one place. When he say, look, when the prophet come and the prophet tell us, or one of the prophets, I don't want to, I like to say one of the prophets because these people think, you know what I'm saying, these Muslims say the prophet and they talking about Muhammad. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying, these people, you know, people's mind get clouded. I'm not talking about, um, when I say the prophet, I'm talking about Elijah. Or I'm talking about one of the two prophets that come, or both of the prophets that come in and that's described in Revelations, right? When I say the prophet, or some other prophet that the might, most I got might see in that he ain't even told us about yet, right? So when I say the prophet, I just believe that there's going to be prophets that come. So I'm going to say prophets. When the prophets come, right? And they get to telling us, they're going to be calling us from all over the world, all these different places. Because the whole, what is Babylon? Hold on, hold we got. Grab, um, grab Genesis chapter. Let's just, I mean, because I feel like we gotta, we always got to remind ourselves of the basics because that's how you understand prophecy. You don't understand prophecy by doing all this fancy stuff. You understand prophecy by understanding the basics. Book tell you about Mystery Babylon, then you should be going to the first time that Babylon was mentioned. What was the scenario when Babylon was mentioned? What is it, uh, Genesis 12 uh, or 11? Uh, Genesis 11. 11. 11. Give me uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. That's right, Sister Pamela, a world system, right? It's Genesis chapter Ethiopia has never been colonized. No, they ain't never been colonized. It's some bad boys. You know what I'm saying? No, they ain't never been colonized now. It's some bad boys. And trust me, it's a couple, it's a couple different groups that didn't try to do it. You know what I'm saying? Ethiopia is some bad boys. You better leave them boys alone. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying? They colonized. You know what I'm saying? They got the uh What's the what's the other ones called? The other Ethiopians that's not Ethiopians, maybe a war all the time. The one that Nipsey Hustle is from. Nipsey oh, Hustle. Whatever Nipsey Hustle is, that's the other one. And them boys is, you know what I mean? Them boys is Nipsey Hustle ain't us. I think no, I, I ain't gonna say that. I think was it his dad or his mom? His mom, I think his mom black. I don't think it's his mom black. Okay, Nipsey Hussle, you know what I'm saying? Technically, in the technical sense, he ain't no, he got some of our blood in him. But you know what I'm saying? It, in terms of his heritage, his heritage ain't us. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, the Ethiopian. African, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. This is uh, Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 11. Give me verse 1. Let's see what the book says. Like. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. The whole earth did what? Was of one language and of one speech. I just read an article. Who? who what's the most spoken language? In all the world, they English? Say English. They say English is like the uh, the national language or something like that. Or the... English. Uh, let I me see. Let me see who in the chat. I'm gonna tell y'all English wrong. So somebody, somebody in the chat, give me something. Yeah. You say Spanish. Yeah. That's the you think that one second? <laughs> That's all we <laughs> hear, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Let me see what we got. He's a retrain. Yeah, he's a retrain. That's what I was looking for. A retrain. That's the other Ethiopians. No, they ain't the they ain't the most spoken language. That's the other Ethiopians. The Spanish, you say Spanish, you say Spanish, Spanish. 
So no, the number one is Mandarin Chinese. What? No, how? No, oh, number one. That's crazy. Mandarin, right? So then, guess what? Arabic is up there too. It ain't all the way up there though. It ain't all the way up there. But Arabic, English. I think English is number three. It's like Mandarin, and it might be Spanish. I have to look at it again. It might be Mandarin and Spanish. But then English, English is up there too. But guess who just put out a law for their whole nation to start learning Mandarin? Just think about all of the nations in the world and who would put that law out for they whole. They not Chinese, by the way. Oh, not Russia. No, nah, not 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 my boy. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Not Kim Jong. Mm, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, not the boy. You know what I'm saying? Who else? Give me one more. Let me see what we got in the chat. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. The king said, "You know what? Look, this king has said a couple things." King said, "Listen." The war, he said, the war of Saudi Arabia is to become the leading nation and to take the Arab world and make the Arab world the new uh, Europe. So Europe calls itself the European what? European Union. European Union. Right? European Union. One thing that they couldn't do is they haven't been able to get all their languages together. Right. They still, you know, what I'm saying still speaking all the different languages and all that. Right. At some point. You're going to have a system. I don't believe that it I don't think we have this unified system yet. Right. But at some point we're going to have a system in place. Right. And it is going to be truly unified. Not unified in the sense that everybody is doing the same thing or uh, wants to do the same thing, but unified in the sense that everybody is going to be pressured to do the same thing. Right. And you're just going to have these little nations, these little outliers. And you have this big system that if you want to participate, you got to play ball. Right. And I think that is yet to come. I don't think we I don't think America is that yet. I think America trying. They playing bully ball. You know what I'm saying? America, you know what I'm saying? America and Europe, they trying. They playing some bully ball out there. But I don't think, you know what I'm saying? I don't think they quite got it yet. So we got to keep an eye on what else is moving and shaking out here. It's a lot of stuff moving and shaking. Who knows? We don't really know. Might end up being America, might not. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you this. Two things is always true about us or about, about the prophecy in our book, rather. Right? Everything in our book always centers us. Right? And everything in our book has always been about the area in our land. Right? That area of the world. Right. So it's possible since we over here and our book centers us that it could be America, but we are everywhere. So we can't be self-centered. Right. We can't be we can't get caught in uh, in America world just because we live here. Right. You have to keep your mind open and say, well, technically, we are everywhere. In fact, our people are doing the best probably in America. Right. It's not the worst. We not doing the worst in America. You go look at some of these other boy, they suffering for real, for real. We suffering in comparison to the other people in America. There's other people that are suffering in comparison to anybody in the world. And they just like us. They are people. Right? You got people down in Haiti that every time they put an earthquake on them people, I don't know if they actually doing it, but I don't know. Every time you look up, they got an earthquake on them people and they going up and they taking their children and doing whatever with them and sending them to Epstein Islands and all types of crazy stuff. It's sick stuff happening in this world and it's happening to our people. Right? All over the world. So it's important that we keep our mind open. Like, well, just because we in America don't mean that America is Babylon. No, 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 no. Mystery Babylon will likely be representative of the entire world, representative of all the nations. That's why he's going to pull us out of all the nations. And that's why he's going to say, come out of her, my people. So the point of it is the trumpet ain't blowing right now for you to move to Africa. That's not the purpose of the trumpet. When the trumpet blow, Everybody's going to move. And we got to know the scripture well enough and know the scripture, not know theories, right? Theories are theories are something else. Separate the theories. I'm going to have theories. I'm going to tell y'all theories all the time because I like doing that, right? But separate the theories from what the books say. Because I can be wrong about this stuff that we dream up. 
These boys online, these YouTube videos, some of them well produced. Give me a little bit of money. I'll produce a good one too. You know what I'm saying? But some of these things are well produced. You know what I'm saying? Hey, boy, I'll be looking at this thing like, boy, that thing was compelling. Don't line up with the book. But that was compelling. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's entertaining. It's this one revelation. Look, it's this one revelation movie. It's a bunch of white people in it. You know what I'm saying? I like the movie. All wrong. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing did wrong. But this is an entertaining piece of work. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you you get, you start liking something and you get, you. that's what you imagine. When the end of the world comes, it's going to happen like the white folks and the shoes are going to be left with smoke coming out of them because they all got raptured up. And that's what you think is the truth. It's not the truth because the book didn't say that. Right? That the book don't describe wild, it. Though. So if the Huh? That's pretty, that's pretty wild. My mom used to make us watch that. Uh, I think you did left, left behind or something like that when we was little. Yeah, left behind. Yeah, my mom. Used to make us watch that. She used to make y'all watch that, bro. She apologized to me like a couple months ago. Oh, I was just about to tell y'all, but you should seek an apology for that one. We was, we was, we was making jokes and stuff like that, and she came out here to visit. And she was like, "What mother would do that to their children?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's uh, you know, say these people, but it's a theory. I'm not mad. I'm not listen. I'm not mad. You know, you 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 look at it, you in the movie making business, you make an entertaining piece of work and you take your theory. You don't know the script. You're a Gentile. How are you supposed to know? We should be teaching this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, now we got to step up and teach the world. Once we teach the world the correct way, then maybe they make a good movie or just give me the, listen, anybody listen, just give me the budget. If you give me the budget, listen, just give me the budget. I'll make the movie. I won't even, I won't even ask for a lot of money. I'm cheap. I'll make the movie. You know what I'm saying? Just give me the budget. You let me make the book because we gonna listen. I personally believe people gonna look at it and be like, one of two things gonna happen: the Bible too real. I'm leaving that alone, or they gonna be like, that's the truth. You know what I mean? That's my goal. My goal is not to like. My goal is not necessarily to save everybody. That's not my personal goal. You know what I'm saying? My personal goal is to just to make sure that people have an end. They got no excuse. I want to make sure people have no excuse that you're making a choice, that you're saying, you know what, I know that's the truth and I know I've been exposed to it, but I want to keep sinning. Or I know that's the truth and I know I've been exposed to it and I need to change my life. You know what I'm saying? That's all I want. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy at that point. I ain't, I ain't about to chase you down. Please believe me. Please do what the book said. No, nah, I don't have time for all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to tell you what it is. I'm here if you got questions. Moving on to the next one. What you got? You've been raising your hand a little bit. Oh, no, it's not. Uh... I think we'll get pretty close to it. Yeah, I think we. Uh, the question was, you know, what I'm saying, do we think at some point in the future that, will everybody will speak the same language? And I think we'll get pretty close to it. I think we'll get pretty close to it because and thank you for taking me back. Let's look at what we're reading when the first mention of Babylon. Right. This is Genesis chapter 11, verse one. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came mm -hmm. to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said, right. So the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Everybody spoke the same language. Right. And after that, they was moving together. So because they spoke the same language, they were organized together. Right. And they moved together and they came to this plane, this area. Right. And what, what happened after that? And they said one to another, go and let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime and they and they for mortar. Mm hmm. And they said, go, let us build us a city and a tower whose top could reach up unto heaven. And let right? us make us a name that lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the whole earth. So they said, you know what? Let's build a tower. Nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with building a tower. People build towers every day. Right? When people don't understand the book, when you don't understand what God asked for and what the, what the wrong piece of it is, you start to make errors. Right? A long time ago, kid you not. When they first start to build skyscrapers, people looked at that and thought it was evil. Because they was religious people, they was looking like, see, that's where they went wrong with the Tower of Babylon. When the Twin Towers, when the, when the things fell into the Twin Towers, there are people that was looking like, see, you built that building too high. God don't like that. They silly, but not realizing this building says higher than the Twin Towers. But, you know, never mind. Yeah, the Empire right? State's still standing, though. <laughs> huh? But the Empire State still standing though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's just, it, people don't make no sense. But it's because we misunderstood this. Nobody ever taught us the truth. They just taught us, look, they built it and they were trying. They taught us this lie. This is the lie they told us. They taught us. 
they tried to reach God. Stop that lying. That's what that's what I thought too when I was younger. They look, they wanted us to believe that people put together brick with the intention of reaching up to God and grabbing him like, yo, I'm about to take your throne. When did the book ever say that? No, you can't. No, you, you build up hard enough until you can't darn breathe if you want, I guess. But that's even going to take you. You probably ain't going to pull that off. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Keep going. Let's see what they say. Let's see why they was or it told us why they was building, right? Why did why did why would they build them? What did the book say? So they won't be scattered abroad. So they wouldn't be scattered abroad. They just wanted to build a monument as a marker for themselves. And they built, listen, when you got a highly pop, it's all the world. There's the whole world. They all together, right? When you got a highly populated city, what happens? You get lost, but how do they build buildings? I know, but what type of buildings do they build? Do they build like a bunch of apartments next to each other? Or when there's too much of people in the one city, do they start building apartments higher? And you have these condos. And then you get these skyscrapers and all of them is full of, uh, full of people's living quarters. Like New York. Because you got a lot of people. So I, I take up too much space if I keep building out. So all they looking at is, there's a whole lot of us, y'all. Let's build up. People do it all the time. Nothing wrong with that. What was wrong with what they did? God told them to spread out. The most high God told Moses, Shem, Japheth, and Ham to go fill the earth. You mean Noah? What did I say? Moses. <laughs> yeah, Noah. <laughs> so Noah and his sons, he told them, go fill the earth. He wanted them to spread out. What they've done is since they all speak the same language, they unify, right? And they began to build up. Inherently, what they're doing wasn't wrong. It was only the fact that the Most High God wanted them to spread out into different areas, and they chose to only stay in one area and build up instead. That was the sin. So now if we take that, if you look at what Saudi Arabia or America or the, uh, the United Nations or uh bricks or what's another group uh the g20 all these different groups of nations right if you look at what they're doing maybe what they're doing a lot of these people are corrupt and wrong so i have to be careful how i say this but it's possible in some situations that what they're doing is not inherently evil right but the most high god is looking and telling them specific things and when they build up in unity, they're going to go against something that the Most High God told them not to do. And once that happens, that's when he says, come out of her, my people. I got something for these people real quick. And then plagues going to be hidden. And the plagues, you remember, Moses, we don't really know how long that took, but we know it was multiple days, at least, right? Because, you know what I'm saying, they'd go and then Moses would come back the next day and Moses would come back another day and all this. So this was over a span of time. Guess what the books say about the plagues that's going to hit Babylon? One day. <laughs> they say, books say one day. One place to say in an hour. You know what I'm saying? Books say the plague going to hit in an hour. Right? But all going to happen in one day according to Revelations. So we have to think about this is going to be a different scenario. This is not going to be like no long drawn out thing. When it happens... It feel look from what I read at least. It look like it's about to be. I feel like we should prepare ourselves for go time, right? So we looking at it right. That's Babylon. Babylon represents unity of nations, right? So that's why when you see these people, are always you see people. Let's just you'll see even Hebrews, right? Hebrews and Christians. Let's have unity. This that, another unity is not always a good thing. What is holy? What does that mean? Set apart. Is that unity? No. You have, to, you have to understand what we're here for. Don't let people fool you with words that sound like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this sounds like this is what God wants. Unity. We should all work together and love one another. That does sound like what God wants. But that's why you have to know the scripture. You have to know it well. Because if you don't, people will trick you with this stuff. That's what Satan is about. 
You got to go back to his first lie. His first lie, he came to it. He said, listen, did God tell you you can't eat of any tree in the garden? She had to correct him. She was like, no, no, no. She Look, that probably gave her confidence. Like, no, I know my scripture. Mm -mm. He said you shouldn't eat in the tree in the midst of the garden lest you surely die. She quoted it back to him accurately. Right? But that was just the prime. That was just something that he said. He set that up just to give you a little doubt. He, you know, he got dramatic. Like, dang, you can't. You know how people do. Dang, man, your mama don't ever let you come outside. You know what I'm saying? Don't it set you up? No, it's like, no, she, no, I mean, she let me come outside the other day. It's just that I got in trouble the other day. So now you, you defending your mama, but you were mad at your mama because you couldn't come outside. So now you defending your mama and then they got you. Cause now you realize, wait, I'm mad at my mama. Why I'm defending? Yeah, you right. She should have let me come outside today. That thing throw your mind. That's listen. When you're dealing with a good liar, they never going to come at you flat out with the lie. Yo, your head gets you don't do your head going your head gonna spin around a couple times and then you're gonna be like, I don't know what the truth is. Right? Get away from over there because if you hit one of them plugs and cut off my stuff, I'm gonna be mad at you. Nope, get away. Don't touch nothing else. Don't. Right? But that's how I go. It spin you around. And then after you dizzy, a good liar, after you dizzy, he put you in the direction he wants you to go. That's what all this stuff is about. That's what all they, that's why they came up with all these catchphrases, the gaslighting and 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 what's it called? All this stuff that don't mean nothing that they try to come up with news. What's the other one? Sister Danielle, what's the other one you taught me? Sister Danielle taught me one. I said, oh my goodness. Sister Danielle, what was that one that you taught me? If you still in the chat, put it in the chat because I can't remember it right now. But it's a lot of these little catchphrases that they got. You know what I'm saying? Like toxic. That's another one, right? You know what I'm saying? It's a toxic relationship. Well, it's like, what do you mean toxic? You know what I'm saying? That's a toxic relationship. Male toxic. What is it? Male masculine. Toxic masculinity. Yeah, that's like, like that? super. That's super. What offensive. does this stuff even mean? That is offensive. It's just a lot. Of, they just be throwing stuff at you. And a lot of it, it really don't mean anything. Or there's another word that means the exact same thing that we've been using for years. But it's not dramatic enough. So now you got to spin people around to where they're using a whole bunch of words that they don't really understand. And then all of a sudden, I don't know. So now everything is gaslight. If I'm arguing with you, it's gaslight. It got to be right because one of, look, you let them tell it. This is what gaslighting is. If you trying to make me believe something that's not true, and you know it's not true, that's gaslighting, right? So if I'm arguing, I'm saying something is true, and you saying something is true. In every discussion, somebody's gaslighting. Technically, right? You can always make that accusation. If I believe something and I'm dead wrong about it, I believe it's true. You believe something is true and you dead wrong about it, right? I'm going to say you gaslighting because I believe what I'm talking about. I believe what's true. And you trying to make me believe something different. You trying to make me feel like I'm crazy about what I believe. Gaslighting. So now we just throwing all this silly stuff at each other. And now we, before we know it, we spun around and Satan is just putting us in whatever direction he want to put us. Everything got to be principled. We got to dig down and get to the root of stuff. What's the root? Because if you're not anchored to the word of the most high God, everything is going to confuse you. And you're not going to know you're confused until it's too late. Walking around praying to trees like Kendrick. What and Chingy, Chingy, Chingy was into what happened? What did he say? What did he say? He praying to the trees. Oh, you better listen to uh, what's the song? I mean, what's the? Uh, well, I don't know what the song was. Yeah, it's that new one. Uh, what's it? Um, uh, what's it called? Mr. Morale. Yeah, it's on. It's on the album. I forget what song it is, but one of me is like, he is like some some. I start praying. I think it's the one he is talking about COVID. Oh, uh, he is like you know what I'm saying. He's like he's like Kyrie didn't get it. I don't know what to do. And he said something a little bit after that. Start praying the trees. I was like, oh, this boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. That boy then lost it quick, too. I ain't never seen somebody lose it so quick. But that's what happened. Right? But it ain't him. Remember Chinky? Chinky came out here talking Ooh, about, he talking he about we, he we Hebrews, this, that, another. I think now he in the Zodiacs and deep in all types of crazy stuff. Yeah. That's what happens. That's what happens. If you don't know, if nobody really taught you the scripture. If, if, if look, a lot of these boys claim the fame is, Look, I can prove to you that we Hebrew. That's they claim the frame. 
they will break it down for you. They would tell you every African tribe that's a Hebrew or this is the Ashanti and this is the Aruba and all these different people. They will break that thing down to you in detail. And that's their conversation with you. But they never teach you the law. They never teach you our scripture. They never expose you to the gospel. They never rightly divide the word to you. So now you're left to your own devices. Everything you based off of is flesh. Are you talking about is what your flesh is? My flesh comes from what the, who cares? If you if your soul not gonna be saved, who cares where you from? You got to seek first the kingdom. First thing you ought to be doing is understanding what our law got to say and letting that lead you to the to the gospel. Or actually, actually, I'm saying that backwards. First thing you ought to do is learn the gospel. Understand the gospel as much as you can understand about it. And then strengthen your knowledge of the gospel through the law. Because you're really not going to understand the gospel well until you understand the law. That's the only reason my mind tells you to go to the law first. But in reality, the first thing you need to do is understand what are y'all should tell you. And then you need to add the law onto it. And I need to say that because that aligns with the apostles talk. All right. The apostle said, don't bother the Gentiles with that stuff. It's the Sabbath every week that they can go learn the law. Right. So we need to align with that message. Everything we do got to align with what the book said. Right. So although me personally, I would want a person to go to the law first. It's not about what I want personally. It's about what the book says, because I trust that what the book say works. That's all we got to do is trust. To Listen, I trust this. Even if, look, even if I sit my butt down and I say, you know what? I don't believe that the book, God don't got it right. I don't think that this is the right strategy, right? Even if that's my mindset, I trust the most high God well enough to know, but I'm going to go with your strategy because I need to argue about it later. I know if I don't go with your strategy, I ain't going to have a chance to even talk to you about it. At least I can do a follow it. And if it don't work out, be like, see, I told you, I would try to tell you, you should have told him to go to the law first, God. Now, do you think I'm going to get that opportunity? No, because it's going to work. The way the most high God have it set up, if you follow it, it's going to work. But if you got doubts, just follow it and then, and, then, and then let God have it when you get up there. Right? When you get to the kingdom, when you get to Mount Zion, let him have it. Be like, see, I told you the whole time I was telling you, let them go to the law first. You said it didn't work out. See, your plan didn't work out. You ain't going to have no opportunity to argue with the man if you ain't got that. But let me let me whisper you a secret. If you follow it, it's going to work. It ain't going to be an issue in the end anyway. You can be like, oh, I didn't think it was going to work, but it did. I'm happy I trust the man. Grab uh, Zechariah. It's Zechariah chapter 9. Is Zechariah chapter 9. Give me verse 11. As for Zechariah thee also, chapter 9, verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy, thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Mm -hmm. Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, filled with the bow of Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of my mighty man, of a mighty man. And Yahuwah shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. He gonna do what now? He shall he shall blow the trumpet and shall go with the whirlwinds of the south. You got to understand what the man is telling you. Read it again. I just want to read it again. I just want to make sure we understand what the man is telling us. He's telling us that he's going to use Israel. He's going to use his people against Greece. Who is Greece? Well, Greece is definitely Gentiles. But what's another name? Uh, Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne, right? Because when we think Greece, we're going to think the country Greece. Yeah. But when the book say Greece, it's bigger than that. It's not just the country. It's not just the country that we know of today. It's talking about Yvonne. My personal theory, I think that get almost everybody that we think are Arabs today. I think it's two, I think it's two groups of Arabs, right? It's the ones that came from Alexander the Great, the Macedonians, 
that's related to Yvonne, according to the book, right? The book called Macedon and Yvonne, all at Yvonne, right? So I think you have, I think you had the ones that came from Alexander the Great that took over Egypt and that spread out all in that area, right? The people from Turkey, the, t the people from just above Turkey and Argentina and all them different places, right? Right? I think you got all these different people. The Medes, right? The Medes would fall into a, a people that's related to Yvonne. They're not Yvonne, but they the people that, you know, they both come from Japheth, right? I think all these people, this is my personal theory, right? I think all these people have covered the Middle East. And now we are calling those Arabs. But then there's a group of people that got darker skin than them. Not quite our color, right? But darker than the, the white people. The white, the, the white people that pass themselves as Arabs, right? And I believe they are the true Arabs. Right? And they both, they intermingle, they both there, but I think they know they're different. And I think they have fights about it. Right, right now, there's a group in Iran, right? They're the descendants of the, the Medes. They call themselves the Kurds. You look at them, they white. They white folks, right? But they go to war with the people of Iran and Iraq and uh, what's the other one? In Turkey. Because they want their own land called Kurdistan. The kingdom of Kurdistan is what they want to set up. Pretty much the Medes. They want to set up the Medes, right? And these other places won't let them do it because Europe came in. Europe shut all that stuff down. Europe made treaties with everybody and divided up the land. And now they're like, no, nah, we want to keep our land. We don't want to give some of our land to you, right? So it's a big fight. It's always, they always at war over there. Turkey killed a whole bunch of them. There's all, all types of drama that go over there. But that's because these are different people, right? Maybe not different people from Turkey, technically. Maybe they come from the same family with Turkey. But when you're talking about Iran, those are different people. I think Iran is probably Persians and all these other different types of people. I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I ain't, I ain't digging into their history and all that. But there's stuff going on over there. So when he's talking about Greece, we got to think bigger than just the country of Greece. It may be the country of Greece. It may, it may be other countries that's related to Yavon, right? But we got to think bigger. He's telling us he's going to use Israelites against Yvonne. Let's read it again. And say Yvonne this time instead of uh, Greece, just so we understand it. Yeah, Javon. So Javon or Yvonne, same thing. But yeah, he was a, a, a descendant of uh, Noah's son, Japheth. Let's read it again for me. Brother T, you still there? You on mute or something? My bad. All right, this is, uh, this is Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. When I bent Judah for me filled with the bow of Ephraim and raised right? up my So he said, look, I bent Judah with the bow of Ephraim. In other words, he's talking about a bow and arrow. So he's saying, look, the bow... Right, is Ephraim is the yeah. northern kingdoms, the kingdom that just got wiped out with Assyria. He's telling us that that is the bow, right? The arrow is Judah. So he said, with Ephraim, I bent the bow. I don't know how this is going to play out. I don't know what this is going to look like. But what this is describing is somehow the northern tribes that scattered around the earth are going to be used to propel and launch the southern tribes. That's scattered all the way around the earth. So in some way, we going to be knowingly or unknowingly working together. And one group of us is going to push the other group ahead. To do damage. Right. Let's see. When I bent Judah for me filled with the bow of Ephraim and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Yvonne, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. Mm -hmm. So we are being made as the sword of a mighty man. In other words. We doing damage, right? We are doing damage. Maybe it's physical damage, right? Maybe we actually go to war with Greece, with, with Turkey, right? With the people that occupy Egypt. Who knows, right? Maybe we go to war with these people. Or maybe it's a different type of damage. Who knows? I don't really know, right? Let's keep going. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. 
Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as, as through wine. And they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. So the Lord, when the Most High God said he's going to blow the trumpet, and what did he say was going to happen with the whirlwinds? And they shall go forth with whirlwinds of the south. Okay, so he said he said he gonna blow trumpets, and then all of a sudden they're gonna go forth with whirlwinds of the south. Right? So what we we understand the three usages of a trumpet. What were what were they? Who remembers? Right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You blow the trumpet, people are gonna be called. For the sacrifices, right? So you could blow it over the sacrifices, right? And then for war, right? So you got war to gather the people, right? And lastly, to blow it over the sacrifice, right? To bless the sacrifice, right? So right here, he said he blow the trumpet. It's going to be like what? He said the arrow going to go out like what? And shall go forth with whirlwinds of the south. No, no, no. Before that. And the Lord has been seen over them and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning and the Lord. That's the what? The trumpet. Go forth as the lightning. As the lightning. I want y'all to understand this imagery. Right. We got lightning. We got whirlwind. And then what else is going to happen? And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go, go with whirlwinds of the south. Mm hmm. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls, and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty. Horn shall make the young men cheerful, and new wine the maids. Mm hmm. So go to uh, go to uh, Matthew chapter 24. Who ever heard of the rapture? <laughs> Who hasn't heard of the rapture? You ever heard of the rapture? You ever heard of the rapture? What's the rapture? The young man accurately describes the rapture. It's about, he said, everyone that hasn't sinned. So pretty much everyone that served God, right, and believes in the, their Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for their Savior, I mean, for their sins, right? Those people, before it get bad, bad, right, before the world start going crazy, before revelations happen, is the way a Christian would put it, before revelation happen, right? They get to get zapped out of here. You are Dragon Ball Z? You know, like Google, he is like, you know, so he did this. He did instant transmission, put a zoom, and he just disappear. He can go up to, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Go up to, uh, what's his name? King Kai? You know what I'm saying? Just instant. Game, you know what I'm saying? All that's going to happen to the Christians, according to the Christians. Right? All the Christians in the world just going to disappear. Jesus Christ is going to call them up. This is the idea. This is, it's, it's a ridiculous theory, but this is what's going to happen. This is according to the Christians. Jesus Christ came. He died on the cross for your sins. Right? He died. He was buried in a tomb. On the third day, he woke up. The way they calculate third day is Friday, he died, and then he woke up two days later on Sunday. Somehow, it's still the third day. I don't know. Right? But then, after that, he woke up he went to the right hand of the father and he said, yo, I'm coming back. Right. So then he comes back seven years before everything gets cracked. Right. Right. When this, I mean, not seven years, seven years before the end of the world, but right before everything gets cracking, he shows up and he's like, yo, 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 all my Christians, let's go. They all get zapped out. They just disappear. And then they appear with him and they all in the sky. And then he goes back and hides for seven years while well, all this crazy stuff is happening. Then he comes back again. And this time he really coming back. And that's when all of 
the world ends or whatever. That's their theory. So according to their theory, Jesus still got two more times to come back. Right? Me personally, I haven't read that in the book. But let's prove it out. Right? So now what we just read in Zechariah is describing a specific event. Right? Let's go to Matthew because it's the same event that Matthew is describing. This is Matthew chapter 24. Give me verse 30. Give me verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the He said immediately back. where? After the tribulation of those days. So the idea of the rapture is that before the tribulation, right? Yahushua is going to come. So to a Christian, this is when he really coming. Like this is his third coming, the Christian. The Christian is going to tell you this is the third coming. They ain't going to call it the third coming because they know they sound ridiculous. But th this, this is what they describe. When they look at, when they read what they, because they say after the tribulation, in they mind, oh, Christians, tribulation? Christians, tribulation means uh, uh, a time of difficulty, right? A time of challenge, a time where everything just is rough. Everybody is suffering. It's hard. The world, the world has a bunch of plagues on it. Everybody dying, all types of stuff. So these times of tribulations, these hard times, the Christians believe that they get raptured or zapped out of here before that happens. So but they call it the pre-trib rapture theory. In other words, the before tribulation rapture theory, right? So the Christians, when they read that and they say after tribulation, they like, okay, no, no, no. That's when he coming back for real, for real. This is after the Christians already got zapped up. So everything that he talking about right here, it has to be only talking about regular people who keep sinning. But let's read it and see if that makes sense. What? What do you got? Mm hmm Well, no, I don't think that plague is the plague that the Bible is describing, right? But when the plagues that the Bible are describing go to happen, they saying that they're going to be out of here before that even go on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Before you even see that, oh, sorry, we ain't got nothing to do with that. We're out of here. That's their theory, right? So now let's take a look at it. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse, uh, verse uh, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then, Watch this. and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall. How many of the tribes? All the tribes of the earth mourn. So all the different people in the world are going to mourn when they see the signs of heaven. They see the Son of Man. The Son of Man, Yahushua Himself, is going to come back, and the world is going to see Him. Right. And all the tribes are going to be crying. They're going to be sitting there sad about this thing. Like, oh, we were wrong. That's why they're crying. We were wrong. We thought this man was a joke and he's here. So if he's here, that means these Hebrews was right. And if they were right about that, uh-oh. Right? That's how they're kind of looking at it. So it makes them sad. Right? Let's keep going. I think somebody at the door, y'all. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with his power and great glory. So now look, the son of man is coming and he coming where? On the clouds of great glory, power and great glory. So he's coming from heaven. Go help her with the door. He's coming from heaven. Right. Number one. He's coming from heaven with clouds and great glory. Let's keep going. I just want you all to remember. Number one is coming from heaven. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Uh oh, now we heard trumpet. Second thing I want y'all to remember, and we got to remember in this order. First, he coming from heaven. Second, a trumpet is going to blow. Right? Coming from heaven and then trumpet. Tell us about the trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Then he's going to gather together the elect from the four winds. So, first thing is what? He's coming from where? The heavens. He coming from heaven. Second thing is he'll blow a trumpet. You're gonna hear that trumpet. Then the third thing is you're gonna gather the elect. You're gonna gather some people around you. Right? So now when we look at Zechariah, similar things are being talked about. Right? 
He said, listen, I'm going to grab my people. I'm going to pull them together. I'm going to use them like an arrow. The arrow going to be like lightning. When lightning in the sky, who see it? Everybody. Everybody see the lightning. Right? Matter of fact, he tell us the coming of the Son of Man, I think it's after this, right? Uh, keep reading. Let me see. I think it's right after this. Now, learn the parable of the fig tree when the branch is yet tender and puts... It's not lightning out before that? Uh, no. Where he say uh, the coming of the Son of Man? No, he say uh, the coming of the Son of Man is going to be like when the lightning is in the sky? I think it's farther. We probably got to keep reading down. See if you can find that for me real quick. All right. Yeah, I want to say it was... Yeah, the coming of the Son of Man is... uh, He said it's like lightning. You know what I'm saying? But you look at it, Zechariah is talking about he's going to pull a bow and it's going to be like lightning. Then after that, he said the whirlwind. He's sending the people out like a whirlwind. Well, he's talking about the same thing about gathering the people. Right? Then he said that y'all, he said y'all going to be seen of everybody. Who downstairs? I thought that was you. Um... It could be. Uh -oh. one. It might, maybe it's in John. I, uh, it's not in this. Not in this one. Okay, we'll find it. Daniel, look for that for me. Coming to Sunday, man, like lightning. All right. So right now, let's go to First Thessalonians. So First Thessalonians is the is the is the place that they use to to prove out they rapture the pre tribulation rapture, right? But I want y'all to see because when this trumpet blow, they think it's blowing because of a rapture. I want y'all to see that this trumpet is blowing for a totally different reason. It's before that. What verse is it? 27. Okay, real quick. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24, verse 27 real quick. Because I want y'all to see this part. I just want y'all to see how the whole scripture is saying everything the same way. Right? Oh, All this is saying the same way. It's talking about the same events. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right? So everybody is going to see it. And that's what Zechariah was talking about when he said, hey, I'm going to pull the people together and I'm going to use them like an arrow and it's going to be like lightning. And then right after that, he tell you, everybody going to see y'all. Let's go back. because We might have missed it. Let's go back to Zechariah. And everybody who's who, the new Bible study crew, I know usually we take it slow. We don't do a whole bunch of jumping around. I just want y'all to know the old Bible study crew is used to this. You know what I'm saying? We jump around a lot. You know what I mean? The new Bible study crew, you know what I'm saying? We try to take it, take it slow. My oh, beautiful knees. <laughs> As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn ye to the strong, hold thee prisoner of hope. Even today do I declare that I render double unto thee. No, and go I back, go back to the arrow. Yeah, when I have bent Judah for me, filled oh, with, with the bow of Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and have made thee as the sword of a mighty man. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. Right? He said, Yahuwah shall be seen over them. <laughs> right? He's talking about the same event. Everybody going to see him, and his arrow going to go forth like lightning. Everybody about to see what's happening right here. So now let's go to First Thessalonians. This is what they think the rapture is. But I want—I just want to remember the order, right? Remember the order was they coming from heaven, the trumpet gonna blow, and people gonna get gathered, right? That exact same order. Let me finish the verse in Zechariah. Oh, go ahead. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and His arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Mm-hmm. So the whirlwinds it gonna pick these people up. But let's see if we can find that uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians, right? So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, give me verse what, 11? 16. Give me verse 16. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Oh, it's so much. We could break this thing down so many different ways. It's so much. Take heed unto thyself, said unto the, uh, and unto the doctrine, continue them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? 
Oh man, I'm in Timothy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, beautiful. Y'all forgot that's a lot had two books. That's funny, I don't know. Okay. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead so hold on. shall rise first. So he said, the Lord himself will do what? Shall descend from heaven with a shout. So he coming from heaven. That's number one. Check. What's the next one? With a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. So then the trumpet... Right? Voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. The trumpet blowing. That's two. Check. What else? And the dead and the Messiah shall rise first. Keep going. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahuwah, to meet the Lord in the air. Right? First shall we ever be with the Lord. So now, the last piece is people are gathered. It's the exact same order, the exact same event that the Messiah was talking about in Matthew chapter 24. But the Messiah said that that's going to happen when? Man. Immediately after the tribulations of those days. Right? So this idea that, oh, if a Christian believes, then you'll be zapped out of here. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's people that don't really know our book. Right? They get to, they get to talking about our book and they don't really understand it. So they teach people. They're they doing the best they can. They try and teach it. But, you know, it's, we've done a disservice to these people. Right. Most high God took away who we were. Right. We were supposed to be teaching these Gentiles. We were supposed to be the ones that instruct them. How are they supposed to know our law? So if they don't know our law, how are they supposed to know the gospel? It wouldn't make sense for them to know it. They just doing the best they can and they get corrupted because, you know, they come from a corrupt people. The whole purpose is for us to be able to guide them. Right. So now it's time for us. We have to be able to step into what we do. But for us to do that, we have to know the book and we have to wash ourselves of the stuff that they taught us. Remember, they taught us our stuff without knowing it. Right. So now we have like a watered down, corrupted version. Our understanding is a watered down, corrupted version of our own book. Right. But we were supposed to be the ones that taught this. So there's a gap in understanding. So we have to take our stand. We have to take our our, 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 our information and relearn it. They don't have the incentive. Right. Because to really understand our book is to really understand our history and our law. There's no incentive for a Gentile to understand our history and our law unless someone explains that incentive to them. I don't know. Yeah, go find something. Go ask somebody else. I don't know. Figure it out. But. You, you have to have an incentive to want to dig into the law. But if you've been taught, law is done away with. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. It's Jesus Christ and nothing else. Works don't matter. All these different just lies that they just get to telling and telling and telling and telling. If you do that, why in the world would you pick it? No, you're going to get you a Bible that got the Psalms, the Proverbs, and the New Testament. And you're going to stick that little horrible Bible right in the back pocket. And you don't think you okay. So it's our job to, to first learn about who we are. That's, that's our motivation. So now it's like, oh, I'm learning about my history. This is my people's history. This stuff that's written in the law, this stuff that's written, Joshua taking us into the land in the times of judges. And we start reading Samuel and we start reading Kings and Chronicles and we start reading all the prophets. Oh no, this is not just something that's written in a book. This ain't no white man that wrote it. This is our actual history, and we have the most documented history in the world. That's our motivation, right? That's our incentive. Now it's like, oh, it's like it's no different from, you know, the, I don't know, the Italian person that takes the 23 and Me and finds out that his family is from this place in Italy, and he goes to visit that village, and he starts learning about what they do and, you know, all the different places his family did. It's no different from that for us, Right. So we start getting ingratiated with our history. Then through that process, we learn the righteousness of the most high God. Then we can take that information and we can go back to the Gentiles and we can say, no, 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 no. Y'all had it all wrong. Actually, we the people. And although y'all sending all this money over to Israel right now, y'all should be sending it to. Me specifically. <laughs> send me the money. Don't send it to Israel. Right. If you send, if anybody 
in the chat, send a dollar to Israel. <laughs> right? Because it's we the people. Like what the thing that the 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 humility and the uh grace that they think they have in is really supposed to be directed at us. It'd drive these people crazy if they found out that we are the people. They'd be looking like, oh, so wait a minute. We've been whipping my Christian self, been whipping on God's people. I've been oppressing God's people. That thing hurt a little bit. Right? So they have zero incentive on believing what we what we believe. It goes against every fiber in them. But it's our job to stand on it. Right? It's our job to stand on it so we can teach these people correctly. Let's go to Revelation chapter 8. Let's wrap this up. It's Revelation chapter 8. Let's learn about some trumpets. You got to understand when these trumpets come up, the Most High God is going to be talking about war. And the Most High God is going to be talking about gathering the people. And this whole thing is posed as a sacrifice, right? The nations are going to be sacrificed, right? This is Revelation chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And I Jump down to verse 6. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Uh huh. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they Look. were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the earth was burnt up, and green grass was burnt up. All the green grass was burnt up. Uh huh. So that's the first trumpet that blew. And the second right, keep going. Sounded, and it was as it as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third mm -hmm. part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea. And had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp. And it fell upon mm -hmm. the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. But the so it's important to understand what we're reading. The grass going to be burnt up. What was the second one? Uh, the sea. Uh, no, nah, the third one was the sea, right? Uh, and the third part, yeah. And the second one was the burning fire. It was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. So, number two and three is is uh the water, because one yeah, the third, third three is wormwood, right? Who is the sea? The third is like the rivers and streams and water. So the grass being burnt up of a portion of the world, a large portion of the world. Then after that. The sea, the oceans getting towed up with fire, right? Then after that, the rivers, that's the good water, is poisoned. Wormwood is talking about poison, so right? Sea, Keep going. The second trumpet, the sea became blood. And then the third, the rivers and streams were poisoned. Oh, I thought it was fire. Okay, so blood in the sea, right? Keep going. And the third angel sounded in a there fell a great star from heaven burning as if it were a lamp and it fell. Hold on. Earth. What happened? Who remembers with Moses when the water became blood? What happened to the animals in that water? They died. They died. So keep that in mind, right? We got animals that's going to be dying because on the land, because the, 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 the uh, grass going to be burnt up. Then we got going to have animals dead in the water because it's going to turn into in the seawater and the ocean water right the big the large the lakes the big lakes in the in the big oceans the big bodies of water that's gonna turn to blood right then you're gonna have wormwood that hit the fresh water right the water that we can drink the rivers and lakes the smaller lakes right that thing gonna be poison for not everything but a lot of the world is gonna be poison right keep going And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and the life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as, it, burning as if it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. And the mm -hmm. name of the star was called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died in the waters because they were made of the waters because they were made bitter. And the mm -hmm. fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. And the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard the angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet 
of the three angels which are yet to sound. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and smoke of a great furnace. And the when they say the star, know that that's when they say star. That oftentimes the the book what we consider angels, right? The the heavenly bodies, right? The the book is all. So let's talk about something. When we say heavenly, because I want us to understand language, because it's going we're gonna be able to understand we're gonna be able to understand what's happening in the world better. Heaven, what does that mean? Uh, sky up above, right? It's above us. It's out there, right? The book of, oftentimes says heavens as in plural which means it's multiple layers of what's out there, right? So if you think of that scientifically, they're saying the exact same thing. They're saying there's the atmosphere and there's this the fear and this the fear, then it's outer space, right? And then they think, you know, they go further than that, but it gets deep after that, right? So that's kind of how they looking at it, right? It's multiple layers. Well, that's how the book is looking at it too. It's saying heavens, right? So don't necessarily think when we say heaven, that, oh, God is sitting on the throne and a bunch of clouds and angels are moving around. That's not what the book is talking about when it says heavens. When it says heavens, it's just saying up there, somewhere up there. It's just talking about something up there. So when you see heavens, think skies or think atmosphere or think outer space or something like that. Right. So if something lives and it comes from outer space, what do we think today? What would a person who don't believe nothing about the Bible, what would they think? They would call it an alien. What does an alien mean? Unknown, because if somebody comes from Mexico and crosses the border, they're what? Illegal alien. An illegal alien, right? So it's just someone who's not from here, right? In our nation, those were aliens that came and they visited our nation and they had to obey our law. That's an alien, right? So when we think of the word alien used as extraterrestrials right just you know used for stuff that's not from this world think of it as something that's coming from the heavens right that's how the bible would describe it the bible would describe it as something just came from the heavens right today we would say that's an extraterrestrial or that's a that's an alien i just want to make sure all the terms are the same right so now when you think of it that way the bible calls stars or uh, angels or extraterrestrials or uh, heavenly bodies or aliens, right? The Bible calls these things stars. So it's saying that a star is crashing to the earth. No, I'm not telling you that a green Martian is coming to the earth and all that. That's not what I'm trying to explain to you. What I'm trying to explain to you, though, is a lot of people may see things and just as in ancient times, they would call it a god. Today, they may call it an alien. But what they're dealing with is something that they have no understanding of. Right? A lot of this stuff, all the stars in the sky, they're named after what? You have Orion's belt. They're Greek. They're, they're, it's Greek and Roman mythology is where all this stuff comes from. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But it's Greek and Roman mythology is where all this stuff comes from. Right? I think Roman mythology are the planets and then the stars are Greek, I think, if I remember it correctly or something like that. Right? So all of this stuff is kind of mixed in. There's a reason why they began to name stars after gods. Right? There is a reason. Remember, we read... The sons of God, which is another way of describing these extraterrestrials or these heavenly bodies or the aliens, right? The sons of God came down and laid with the daughters of men, and then they produced giants. So now you got these scientists, they digging up stuff, digging up stuff, and they catch what? Oh, look at this bone structure of this, this thing. I mean, it looks like a humanoid and... But the bone structure, I mean, the the size the size of this leg is twice the size, three times the size of the leg of a human. Ah, you know what this is? This is a primitive human. We evolved from this. Yeah. That's what they come up with. And so they get the carbon dating and all this stuff. Okay, this was 300 million years ago. This silly stuff they become. 300 million years ago, this thing, this, that, another. Meanwhile, the Bible is telling you the same thing. Yo, 
Israelites, go over there. It's going to be giants in the land. You kill every one of them. Kill every single one of them is what our book told us to do, right? So then we kill them and we do it. But when they get to digging all these people up that we kill, they look at it like, oh, my goodness. Lord, look at that. This is what we evolved from. We were Neanderthals, right? And then, they, you know, what I'm saying? they come up with their theories. It's because they're not well learned in our law. They don't know our book. So they're doing the best they can. They're just digging some stuff up and taking a guess, seeing what's stick against the wall. And they change their theories every couple of years and, you know, enhance it and do all that stuff. What, what, what could they do? They ain't, got, they, ain't got no, they ain't got no history like we got. And they don't believe our history because they've been lied to about it. So, of course, they're going to say that, right? But that's what this stuff comes from. So now, if you have this star that comes down, perhaps this star is a meteor, as some people would think, right? Or perhaps this is somebody that's not from here that comes down here, and let's see what is, what's supposed to happen. I saw a star fall from heaven unto earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he so then it. he had a key to a bottomless pit. This is this is what the fifth trumpet, I think, the first woe, yeah, and the fifth, fifth trumpet, the fifth one, yeah. Right? So he had the key to the bottomless pit. What happened after that? And there arose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun of the air and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So yeah. now, this thing somehow comes here, and I'm going to say lands on earth, right? He lands on earth, and after that, opens up what I'm going to think is a bottomless pit, probably the ground, right? Opens up something, and a bunch of smoke start coming up. What do they tell us is under this ground? The scientists. Magma. <laughs> they tell, I mean, it's magma, just hot, burning. So imagine if somebody somehow came down and they got, I don't know, different powers or technology or something, I don't know, and they just opened that thing up. And all of a sudden, it's just a bunch of smoke that's been stuck underneath the ground. What they say if you, I mean, if you just walked up to a, a volcano and just, and just sniffed it, what, what do you think would happen to you? You ever seen somebody try to walk up to a volcano like the scientists? What are they wearing? A little biox hazard suits or something. They got oxygen, all that type of stuff. All that stuff will kill you. Them fumes and stuff that's stuck in the ground, that stuff will kill you in a second. Right? So they got to suit up because they know if they get over there, Woo! I don't know what you got grilling down there, right? They'd be laid out, Ugh. right? So now you got these fumes that's coming out of the ground, and it's so much smoke that it covers what? Yeah. Let's see. And and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Hmm. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And so now these are some different locusts. And they came out of the smoke. And they had given a little bit of power. And the type of power they were given is the same type of power that a scorpion was given. Let's hear about these locusts. You've seen the locusts before, right? Okay. Remember that, that, that year, you know what I'm saying? What was it, like four or five years ago, we had all them locusts over there? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like everywhere you go, it's just a bunch of locusts and all that. That thing happened in Texas a lot, I heard, right? Supposedly. I don't know. You tell me about it when y'all get it, right? But it's a whole bunch of locusts, right? Let's see what happened. They came out of the smoke, and it was and they got scorpion powers. It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their foreheads. Right? So anybody who ain't sealed by God, anybody who don't got this seal on their forehead of God, that's what the locusts is after. And they got the power of scorpions. Locusts normally go after what, though? Grass. Grass. Most High God just told them, don't touch the grass. Only thing I want you to touch is the men who don't got a mark on their forehead. Right? And then they got the power of a scorpion, which stings. Right? Let's see. Keep going. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he stings a man, strikes a man. Right. So now, just like when a scorpion poke your butt and you be sick, messed up. Right. Sometimes scorpion kill you. They ain't going to kill you, though. They say it's going to sting you. It's going to put you down for five months. You're going to be sick. Right. Keep going. Watch this. Five months. You sick. That's crazy. Right. 
Keep going. Watch this. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. So he said it's going to be so bad that these people are going to be like, just, just kill me already. That's how, the, that's how bad this sickness is going to be for five months. They'll be like, they're just, I don't even have a will to live anymore. Right? But the Most High God said they're not going to be able to die. They're going to want to die, but they ain't going to be able to accomplish it. Keep going. Let's see. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Right? So these locusts were just like horses. Watch this. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces mm -hmm. were like the faces of men. And the face of them are just like men. Right? These look like locusts. But they kind of like horses that's prepared for battle. And they got faces just, just like men. Watch this. Keep going. They had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle mm -hmm. so look this is where the this is where the scientists was were trying to explain it in the documentary i was watching there's like we'll see the sound of many horses going into battle that's that's a jet engine or a helicopter right and oh and and the face that looks like in, in the breastplate, you know, the face and the hair. Well, what it's talking about is the propeller in the front, right? And he interpreted that to be hair. And you know how some of the, the B-2 bombers in the first in the first World War had a face painted on it. You know, this, that, another, you know, they had, the, you know, they had, they had like the bombers and they had like the face with the teeth. You ever, you ever seen that of the old planes? Yeah, like on I know what I'm talking about. You got the old plane. They got like the teeth in the front. They kind of put it on the front of it. That's what he is trying to say. Like, maybe it's something like that. I'm looking like, man, you are out your darn mind. <laughs> you, you are out your darn mind. Keep going, though. Let's look at it. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and they and their wings, and they were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But so Abaddon, this alien that come out, this out of this world creature that come out. He going to open up the earth. Smoke going to go up. It's going to cover the sun and the moon. And then after that, locusts going to come out. But these ain't regular locusts. These locusts sound like they're a little big. They look like horses. They got men faces, hair like women, breastplates, right? And they got tails on them. And every time they hit you, you down for five months. You hoping somebody kill you, but it won't happen, right? And guess what? He run them. He say, you know what? Go that way. Go this way. One theory is the world gonna feel like they under attack by an alien. That's what the world gonna feel like. People gonna feel like, what are these creatures? Where do they come from? We've never seen this. They ain't know. They they ain't gonna know that the we gonna know right when this stuff happened. The people who understand this book gonna know. They gonna be like, oh, those creatures actually came from the bottom of the earth. But since this guy came from outer space and landed here, they're going to be like, hey, Abaddon, the dude that, because I like to imagine that he got like, he got like, you know how we got the, uh, what are they called? The things would be like, Mr. Knox, we're waiting on the field. <laughs> what are they called? The police siren things? Not the siren, but the, the things that, you know what I'm saying? I'm Not the walkie-talkie, but the... What's the thing? What's the thing that you speak into and you speak to a crowd of people? It's like the Blair horn or something like the that. The megaphone. It's something else though. It's what? A horn? What horn? Is it's it a horn, Blair right? Horn? Do they call them the it's Blair the horn? not air horn? The bull uh bullhorn. It's a bullhorn. So you know what I'm saying? The bullhorn, you go and you talk into it, you click the it's like a little gun, it's like a horn gun, and then you click it. Megaphone. I thought it was a bullhorn. Yeah, Miss Pamela said it's a bullhorn. Uh bullhorn is an instrument. Okay, well, megaphone is. So you got the megaphone gun thing, and you press a little gun thing, and you say, Mr. Knox, we're waiting on the field. You know what I'm saying? And you talk to people, and they can hear you. I like to imagine he got, like, one from outer space, something. We ain't never seen nothing like this before. That thing, like, you know what I'm saying? It reaches, you know what I'm saying, all the corners of the earth, and everybody hears it as if it's right in front of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not loud. It's not loud for the person that's right next to him. Like the person who's right next to him in front of the megaphone hears it the same way as the person that's on the other side of the world. 
That's how I like to imagine. Like he got some crazy stuff. Like this thing worked amazingly without any wired technology. He just he just speaking everybody here. So I like to imagine he come up. Y'all saw Superman? Y'all know I watch these movies. Look, y'all saw Superman? So look, the super the newest Superman. When the dudes came down, you know what I'm saying? And it was the dude that got Superman powers and the and the girl, the one girl and the other dude, you know what I'm saying? And they start beating up on Superman. So I like to imagine he came just like that. And then he's like, yo, my name is a bad. So I'm gonna let y'all know how this is about to go down. I'm about to light y'all butts up. And all of a sudden, the, the things start coming out. Because <laughs> cause look, Joel say they, them things move like in unit. We ain't going to grab it. But Joel say them things move like military. Like they in unit. Like, they do, 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 do. Huh? He said they don't break rank. They don't break rank, the book say. You know what I'm saying? So them things just going to be going. Just, do, 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 do. And then people going to be looking at it like, ah! That thing going to reach out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Your gonna be laying down, and somebody gonna have to come grab you. <laughs> they gonna grab your butt, put you up in bed. You be like, oh, first day you can be like, I think I'm gonna make it. Then the third day, then the seventh day, then it's three months in, and you looking like I'm still sick. And they gonna be trying to come up with all types of vaccines for it. You know, people gonna still try to make some money. They gonna hit you with a vaccine. It's gonna make it worse. Like, oh, just kill me, just kill me. Ain't nobody gonna kill you. Right? And who knows? They probably ain't going to kill you because they make money from you being in the hospital bed or something. Who knows how it's going to play out? But whatever the case is, they're going to want to die and you're not going to be able to die. Right? And then you're going to look at it. What happened? Bullhorn. See, Sister Pamela said theatrics. <laughs> Sister Pamela said bullhorn too. But, um, uh, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff is going to be happening and people aren't going to understand what's happening. Right? You're going to be looking at it like, I don't know what these things are. I don't know what. I've never seen anything like this. And it's this guy named Abaddon that's talking to everybody. And he leading these things. He telling them, no, no, no. You, you good. Uh, go ahead and hit Milwaukee next. You know what I'm saying? Them things going to You know what I'm saying? They hit Milwaukee. Milwaukee going to be a mess. You know what I'm saying? That thing going to be a mess. But guess what? Who ain't going to get touched? It's going to be some people that got the seal of the Most High God. Right? And when they got that seal on them, ooh, look, it's going to be some of them Catholics. They're going to write that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be in a... Because it might happen in Lent. You never know. If that thing happened in Lent, how you think a Catholic going to feel? They're going to have a look. You know the Catholic going to put the, the black. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be people like... They're going to see one person going through Lent that didn't get touched by the thing. Like the like the scorpion going to just... I mean, the, uh, the thing going to move right past them. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to have a little Lent thing on their head. There you go. You'll be like, Somebody give me a Sharpie. You know what I'm saying? And he going to write it on his head the same way. Then they going to see the scorpion turn around and poke him. Poke the one that just skipped. Like, oh, we missed one, boss. Get him. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, crap. This ain't going to help me either. And then it's going to eat it butt up. But it's going to be actually some people that serve the most high God. And it probably ain't even going to be something visible that you can see. You know what I'm saying? But the most high God marked these people and they're going to be all right. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everybody who served the most high God is going to have this mark because I don't know that. I might have to look into that a little bit more, but it's going to be some people that got this mark and they ain't going to be touched. Other people are going to be touched. Maybe some Hebrews, maybe some Israelites, maybe some Christians, but your Christian butt is not going to be raptured out before this happens. <laughs> Sorry. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be in it just like with everybody else. The only people that's not going to get touched is the ones that got this mark. Right? Keep going. Let's see what happens. In the Hebrew tongue is a bad one, but in Greek, tongue has the name Apollyon. Mm -hmm. One woe is passed, and behold, there come there come two woes more hereafter, and the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, and there were prepared for an hour and a day, and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of horsemen, who were a hundred who were 200,000, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and adjacent and, brims and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. 
by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which is issued out of their mouths so listen i know this stuff sound right when you look at it, it's like man this stuff sound like a cartoon or something like that right sound crazy whoever seen the hercules movie yeah you remember was it was his name phil yeah what's his name phil and he was like half what was it donkey or something half goat goat yeah he had half goat you know what i'm saying he had a little belly and stuff and he walked around with the goat that looked crazy too don't it right but let's make a connection here that is said to be not in the bible necessarily but in hebrew writings in the book of enoch the book of jubilees right those seder yeah that's said to be a seder the, the seders those were said to actually exist in hebrew writing and what the bible does say is that the sons of men came down and they laid with the sons of men women and they created giants right but one thing that these other books say is that the sons of man which they call i mean sons of god which they call watchers right they also laid with animals mm. and when they laid with the animals it created these half animal half almost human looking things and the theory would be that that is where the romans got these crazy concepts of these half man or these mermaids and all that is because you had a watcher Not, uh, that enoch, uh, enoch said when god punished the women that were with him he made them syrians as in the book of enoch it said the women were syrians or something like that and i think that's said like they a mermaid were. or something Oh, sirens. Yeah. Yeah. Mermaids. Right. Yeah. Right. So all these different things, it comes from these watchers. Right. Then those become Roman and Greek ancient mythology because they saw these things. And what you think, if you see these things, what you going to do? If you see a horse. Right. And the person riding on it, his chest is on fire. Say he got a breastplate of fire. His horse looked like it got a lion head. So he riding on something that looked like a horse. But that thing got a lion's head on it. And every time it opened up his mouth, fire is shooting out of it. His chest is on fire. And he's looking at you like you're crazy. And this thing looks different from anything you've seen. What you going to do? If it tell you, all right, so listen. All you got to do is bow down real quick and I'll leave you alone. What you going to do? Your butt going to be down so quick. Like, what you talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? What you mean? Leave me alone. We good. That thing going to happen quick. Listen, a group, an army from East Africa converted almost all of Africa to Islam. And they ain't had no lion that spit fire. All they had was a sword. What do you think the Christian Catholic Church converted almost all of South America to Catholicism? They didn't have no darn locusts with, with stingers. And people got with it immediately. Like, oh, no, yeah, no, no, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? <laughs> don't, just don't, don't shoot me. me. You know what I'm saying? Like, just take the musket and point it in a different direction. Jesus Christ. Right now, I pray, yes, I accept him. Quick. It's easy money. Easy money that's going to happen. So you have to understand, when these people see this stuff, it's breaking them. They ain't ever seen nothing like that. When you see a, a half man, half goat, you're going to look at that thing and be like, Oh, no, that's a, you know what I'm saying? That's something special there. You see a big old giant strong man, guess what you're going to call him? You a son of the God. You Hercules. You're going to start calling these things something and you're going to start worshiping them. And that's how they got all their gods. That's how they, that's how they, you know what I'm saying? That's my theory of how they got all these gods, right? So I say all that to say, as crazy as it sounds, there's a lot of people here today, or not here today, but a lot of people that we have stuff that comes from these people that they believe they saw this stuff a long time ago. And those watchers aligned with the same time. And the response, according to Book of Enoch and Jubilees, to those watchers were to seal them in the earth. And now you have a God watcher potentially. Huh? Yeah, God punished them and in, in, uh, trapped them in the earth. Yeah. The Most High God punished them and put them in the earth. Right? That's in our book too. Right? Then... You had this guy who pops up out of nowhere from outer space. He opens up the earth and locusts come out of the thing from out of where. Where'd they come from? I ain't never seen no locusts like this. They ain't the big and they got stinkers and they got faces like darn humans and girl hair. Right? And they go and they get net people. Right? 
Then after that, more of these watchers come from underneath the Euphrates Sea. So it's water and they come. When the first one opened up, we talked about what's underneath the earth is what? Magma fire, right? Then these other ones come up and what they got on their breastplate? Fire. Fire. These boy come up and they on fire. They've been locked in there burning. They come up on fire and now they riding this lion horse thing that's spitting fire. And where in the world would a lion horse come, mix come from? These might, these might be a lot of the creatures that came about as a result of all the mixing and stuff that they was doing when they were down here a long time ago. And all this stuff might have been living under the world this whole time. And this might be the reason that no matter how much they try to dig, 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 they can only get so far because the pressure starts to break down their machines or pop their little brains. Right? When you go down under in the water, you go so far and you're trying to see the Titanic and then your whole little thing just... You know what I'm saying? Whole thing. Can't even find you. Just shoo. Because the pressure is so strong. When you go too far, that thing just swallow you up. I mean, that might be the reason. Nevertheless, with the second woe and the sixth trumpet, guess what? My man come and they come up out of this thing and they riding these mean looking thing with lion heads and it spit fire at people. And let's see what happens. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads. And with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented. Not one of the works of their hands. That they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver, brass and stone and of wood. Which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries. Nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. So let me tell y'all something. If y'all saw this stuff and y'all knew it was coming from God, would you repent? I mean, we would bow down and worship these things if they, I'm not we, but it's people that have bowed down and worship these things if they saw it and they didn't know what it was coming from, right? So what does that tell you about these things? They ain't coming in talking about, hey, I'm coming from the most high God and I want you to repent. This is a judgment. This is not, trying to gain people and trying to turn people. You know what I'm saying? This is a judgment. So people are not going to make the connection of where this is coming from. Therefore, they're not going to be turned away from that. They might start worshiping these things. Just like, please don't kill me. I'll tribute to you. I'll do you whatever I can because that's how people are. Because they don't understand. They don't make the connection of what's happening and why it's happening. But those of us who know the scripture will be able to look at it and be like, oh, it's happening. This is it. Like, this is it. This is it. It's not an alarm. That trumpet that we heard, that's the real deal. Let's hear the last trumpet. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth, and cried with a loud voice as when the lion roars. And when he had cried, seven thunders okay, uttered their cry. voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up these things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted, lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that lives forever and ever who created heaven and all the things that are in are and the earth and the things therein are and the sea and the things which are therein and the and there's should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he began to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. The voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stands upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went to the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it upon it. Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall mm -hmm. be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, in my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou prophesy again before many peoples, nations, and tongues, and kings. So that is the end. The last, when the, we don't know, we don't know what that last angel said. 
right? Book haven't revealed it. But he spoke some words, and the most high God was like, no, 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 no. Don't write that one. Shut that one up. Eat the book. One day, you got to release this stuff, but not now, right? But that's when it's all said and done at that point. That's when, that's when everything starts to change a little bit, right? But let's see if we can learn a little bit about it, just a little bit. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Matter of fact, before we get that, give me Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. And then after that, we go into 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. I'm trying to wrap it up, but there's so many different directions we can go with this deal. Oh, my goodness gracious. And the, seventh, this day. and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of, mm -hmm. our Lord and of his Messiah. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and are to come, because thou hast taken unto thee great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry, and wrath is come. In the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple right. of God was opened in, in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hell. So this is the coming of Yahushua. When it's talking about the ark, that's the coming of Yahushua. That happens afterwards. That happens after all the nations get mad. Why would the nations be mad? We got to put a couple things together real quick, right? Why would the nations be mad after everything we just read? They'll be getting attacked. The whole world getting attacked, right? Not literally everybody, because remember, you read and say, this is going to get a third of the people. This is going to hurt the third of the grass. This is going to hurt the third of the waters. So not everything, but just different pockets of people around the world is getting these different plagues, right? These things are happening to them. At the same time, in a different place, the book is telling us, come out of her, my people, right? The trumpets are blowing, right? Which are calling us and letting us know, one, is war to come, right? We exit out. We go to wherever we go, right? Let's say we end up going to, mm, I don't know, Israel. We take back our land. We build it up. There's another place that tells us that our land is going to be the only land or one of the only places of the land that has fresh water and the only land that has uh, uh, fruit that heals us. So now think about it. This group over here, this nation or these nations, they sick because they get stung by this thing and they sick for five months. And then this nation over here ain't got no grass, no vegetation. They ain't got nothing to eat. And this nation over here don't have no fish because the water is blood. And this nation over here, they water is poison. They ain't got nothing to drink. Right. All these different things are happening. And then all of a sudden you got this alien that's coming down. And attacking this, 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 these nations over here. And then you got this alien, these aliens over here that's killing people. And all of a sudden, we sitting patiently in our land. They just let us go from their land. We build up our land and we got all the resources in the world. Fresh water, healing plants. We got our economy going. We probably making trades with people. People like, oh, look, I just need some water. Oh, man. I can't, I can't get that to you. For water, water is hard to come by now. Go ahead. I'll tell you what. How much you want? You just want a bottle of water? Oh, that's going to be $18 there. $18 for one bottle of water? Inflation, man. Y'all know how y'all did us. Right? And then we're going to give them the bottle of water for $18. Then they, that's going to make their butts mad. They're going to be like, these Negroes, you know what I'm saying? We just, we didn't never have to let these people go. Then they're going to come after us. And that's, we ain't got to read it, but that's the that's what the book calls the Battle of Armageddon. That's what you hear about in the movies and all that. The Battle of Armageddon. The true story of the Battle of Armageddon is all the nations, for whatever reason, decide to ta attack God and attack the land of God. Why would they want to do that? Because that's the only land that has the former slaves, the former oppressed, that left. And at the same time that happened, the rest of the place don't have resources like they used to. All the nations that was built up in this unity have now been broken down, split apart. Different things happen in the different pieces of them. And now they looking at it like, 
oh, this is some bull. This is some bull crap. We got to sit here and deal with this stuff. We got plagues hitting us, and these people sitting pretty in the land that we they gonna look at it that they gave us that land. We let y'all go to that land and let y'all have it. Please, we about to go over there. Load up the uh, you know what I mean? Load up the B two bombers. Load up. They gonna load up all that stuff. Fly over there, and that's when the Most High God gonna show up. Y'all sure are gonna show up and be like, no, 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 no. I got it from here. Don't even worry about it. Right? What the Christians think is the rapture. That's what they're going to see. They're going to see it like a lightning. It's going to be an arc in the sky and like a light. Everybody going to see it. And he going to put an end to all that foolish. Everybody that come up, that boy just going to be, y'all saw, um, y'all saw, y'all know an X-Men. Um, which one was that? It's, I think it's one of the last X-Men's. You know, and the dude put the headphones in and then he super fast, Quicksilver, he super fast. And then he start running around with the headphones in. And he just like, mm, do, do, do. And he changing stuff. And he punch a dude, you know what I'm saying? That another. Then the music stopped. Everybody <laughs> you know, fall all over. That's how y'all sure gonna be. Y'all sure gonna be like, ah, all right. And do do what you got? What you got? What your books say it's gonna be flooded with blood. They say they say it's gonna be so much blood in the land from people dying. Cause you have to think of it. It's not just the people that live there. This is gonna be all the nations that come. So it's like the world. All the fighting world is going to be in one place. There's going to be a ton of people, right, trying to fight up against us. Probably more people that's ever been gathered at one time and ever before. And then they all going to die. So all of their blood is going to build up and it's going to flood. The books say it's going to reach the horse's bridle. So in other words, the horse chest, that's how high the blood going to be. It's like sitting on top of a horse and having blood all the way up. Right. And it's just going to be nasty and all over the place. And then we're going to have to clean that mess up. So yeah, the book say we're going to have to clean that mess up. He wants to clean the bodies. Yeah, we're going to have to clean that mess up. We're going to have to go out and then, you know what I'm saying, mark the bodies, the book say. You know what I'm saying? We have to mark them and all that. But we'll get to all that stuff. We'll read all that stuff so y'all can y'all can get an in-depth view of it. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's end it off real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Important that y'all know when we look at these we look at these feast days, man. All these feast days mean something. These appointed times, I don't like calling them feast days. A lot of days, you know what I'm saying? These appointed times, they mean something. Every one of them means something. 15 what? This is uh 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. 50. But you know what I'm saying? We look at it as uh Yahushua, the, the most high God gave us six appointed times, not including the Sabbath, right? But he gave us six appointed times, right? He gave us Passover. He gave us the week of unleavened bread. He gave us the day of first fruits, the first fruit sheaf waving. Then he gave us the feast of weeks. And then he gave us the day of trumpets. He gave us the day of atonement. And then the week of in gathering or the feast of booths. Right. These are the seven days are the seven appointed times that he gave to us. Right. If you look at the first set. Right. You got Passover. That's when Yahushua died. According to the Gospels, he, he was killed just before the Passover. Right. Then he rose on the first fruit sheaf waving during the week of unleavened bread. Right. Then Feast of Weeks, seven weeks from the, the, the day of uh, the first fruit sheaf waving, seven weeks from there, the spirit of, uh, of, of the Most High came out and was poured out on the people for the first time in the way in that way to where they spoke in tongues. Right? That happened on the Feast of Weeks. So all these occurrences happened on the specific days that the Most High God gave to us. So the reason why I mention that is because these same days, there's there's another three set of days, or there's another three days, or three uh, appointed times rather, that are still remaining that we haven't seen them be fulfilled yet with Yahushua. And what I'm explaining to y'all is this stuff that we read in Revelations are aligned to these days. Like these days testify of this stuff. The day of trumpets testifies of it. The, the day of atonement testifies of it. And the in gathering. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. I wonder what that has to do with. That's when we get to set up our stuff. That's when we actually get to be in the land and be with Yahushua. And he pulls us in just like we were reading here. But he does it after the trumpet. Right. So I want us to, to, to take these days serious, be able to see the meaning behind these days 
and then be able to see Yahushua in not just these days, but see Yahushua in everything that we read, right? Because he's everywhere. Whether we see him or not, he's there. We just got to make sure that he reveal himself to us, All right? This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does mm -hmm. corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When he says sleep, he's talking about die. Yeah. He's talking about death. Death. He's calling it sleep because he knows that those that, that serve the Messiah, when they die, they're going to wake up again. So he's not calling it death because he knows that it's not, it's not permanent. It's going to be people that die forever, right? But he's saying those of us, we're going to actually live again, right? Keep going. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. He said, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. In other words, in an instant. What's going to happen? At the last trumpet. At the what? At the last trump. The what trumpet. happens at the last trumpet in, in, uh, in Revelations? They were called in the sky. <laughs> so he told the angel, hey, shut your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell him that part. Shut your mouth. But he said, listen, this is when all the kingdoms of the earth become Yah's. That's when Yahushua come back. And then we read in Matthew and in 1 Thessalonians, when Yahushua come back, everybody's gathered. And now we reading here at the last trump, what's going to happen? In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, what happens? For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be. Ain't that what we read already in Thessalonians? He said the dead shall rise first, right? Okay, keep going. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall he then shall be brought to pass the thing that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Mm -hmm. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh. You are the Messiah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Look at that. And then a the Christian got the nerve. After reading that, Christians will read that. They got the nerve to turn around back to us and say, it's not about your works. The man tell you, listen, just so you know, in the twinkle of an eye, if you serve in the most high God, are you going to be changed and you're going to put on incorruptible? In other words, you can't be corrupted. That means when somebody try to bury you, if somebody hits you in your face and buries you alive, you'll be sitting there. Your skin still look good, pretty, probably smell good when you come out because you work differently now. Right. You ain't got the same skin as everybody else. Matter of fact, the books say the books say uh, we ain't got to get it out. I, I don't even remember where it is anyway. But the books say, yay are gods, but you will die like men. A lot of people don't understand what that's talking about. He's saying that we are going to be like gods to people. It's still going to be regular people. When we just read all that stuff, did everybody die? Did everybody in the world die? It's a third of people here, third of people here. Yahushua going to come back. It's still going to be regular people living that never served him, right? And then we're going to be changed in the instant. And we're going to set up our place in Israel and the rest of the world. For a thousand years gonna have to come to us and they're gonna serve god and they're gonna praise god but they're gonna be regular people when they look at us they're gonna look at us like we gods they're gonna be like y'all like gods and we're gonna give glory to the most high god but they're gonna think that we like gods the same way that the ancient romans and greeks thought that they saw gods because they saw something that don't operate like in this world and that's how we we going to change into something like that. It's a whole lot of crazy stuff that's going to be happening. Stuff that we ain't never seen before. But we also never seen nobody walk on water. We also ain't never seen no sea split. We also ain't never seen a whole lot of stuff that we read in this book. It's a lot of stuff that people have never seen. Who's seen lightning? Like strike something and like. I was watching a video. Lightning struck and split a tree in half. I thought it was fake. I was like, that's fake. I looked at that again. I was like, I was like, man, let me look this up and see. And it happens. I've just never seen it. I didn't believe it. I just never seen it. Right? If I told you, you know what I'm saying? If I told you that um 
there's a sea monster under the sea that breathes fire. You'd probably be like, eh, yeah, right. But if I showed you a YouTube video of this sea monster or the, this fish that's way deep in the water, right? And it creates electric sparks. It's electric sparks. Or an eel, even an eel creates electric sparks, right? Or the, the, the little fish in the sea that create light, right? They got these little things hanging from them. Look like aliens, create light. We've never seen them. So until we've seen them, we'd be like, yeah, right. There ain't no real thing. And then you see it and it's like, oh, it's another. It's a lot of stuff we just haven't seen. We haven't been exposed to. And some of this stuff, it's a reason that we haven't been exposed to it. So the Most High God got a big number that he about to pull on people. And if people are too familiar with it, they might understand what's happening. So seeing, he makes sure that they don't see. And hearing, he makes sure they don't hear. Because otherwise, they might turn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, these people might turn. And he ain't trying to get some of these people to turn. Some of these people, he got to turn them. They got to turn on their own. They got to turn. They got to turn based off of what he already gave to them. He gave you the word. He gave you miracles. He gave you testimony. He gave you, he gave you the world. Right? And now we still want the man to tap dance for us and do more so that we can believe. All right. We put it in front of you. Right. And at this point, everybody got their own option. They could choose to believe. They could choose not to believe. But whether you choose to or not, you're going to see some unbelievable stuff. And unless you believe, it ain't going to make sense. All right. Any questions? I got to get a chat 15 darn minutes for question because, you know. They yell at me if I don't do that. Let me see. What, we, what questions we got? Tomorrow for a fellowship hour, we're going to do a deep dive into calendars. Um, because, uh, because we were talking about the feast days and talking about the appointed times. I wanted to be able to, you know, it's always confusing because... Many, uh, especially y'all that's online, a lot of y'all are on YouTube all the time. Y'all got different camps that y'all listen to or different people you've been exposed to or y'all come from other camps or other churches or whatever. And everybody got their own little way of doing things. And they celebrate Passover on this day versus that day or they celebrate Day of Trumpets on this day versus that day. So I want to be able to be as transparent as possible of how we come up with the days that we use. Um, in the calendar that we use and make sure that we're all firm in what we understand to be in scripture and firm for the stuff that's not in scripture as well. Um, just because, you know, it's easier. As long as you, you had the information and you stand on it, it's easier not to be deceived. And can't nobody tell you nothing. All this stuff makes sense. All right. It's not, it's not a whole lot you can tell me about anything, whether it's Bible related or not, because I'm principled in the Bible. There's not really a whole lot of stuff you could tell me. All right. You tell me some stuff. I'm like, OK, for sure. I get it. Like some stuff is not important to me and some stuff is. I know what's wrong. I know what's right. You know what I'm saying? That's how, how it is. And after that, it's just every person's decision. But I know. You know what I'm saying? I know what's wrong and I know what's right. And there you just make a decision from there, whether you want to do what's right and whether you want to do what's wrong. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? But the key is knowing. Right. What do you know? All right. Don't do it because you deceive. Do it because you rebellious. That's different. You know what I'm saying? Most of our God tell us to be hot or cold, but don't play the middle. Do not play the middle. Don't be lukewarm. He said, if you lukewarm, he'll spit you out. Okay, no questions? No questions. All right. Well, let's pray out.